Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 supports the plan to produce business process. One of the major components of the plan to produce process is material requirements planning. Material requirements planning, or MRP, is a time-phased planning system that offsets planned recommendations based on lead times. Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 also supports the concept of capacity requirements planning. Capacity requirements planning is a way that we can, as users, understand the workload that we place on our operations. Let's take a look. Assuming that we've already generated MRP, in other words, we've already run MRP, we're going to go ahead and look at the quantities query window. Now this window is where a user might go to analyze the output from the MRP run. The MRP quantities query screen is where a user would go to look at the output from the MRP calculation. We have the ability to filter this output based on the type of output it is, whether it might be manufacturing oriented or purchasing oriented. In this example, we're looking at manufacturing oriented, specifically existing manufacturing orders, as well as planned manufacturing orders. Now we have a whole variety of ways to filter this data. We can filter it by a buyer ID, a planner ID, by item number, by a particular site. In this example, what I'm going to do is filter the output the system is giving me by release date. In other words, as a user, I'm more concerned about things that might affect me tomorrow as opposed to things that might affect me a week from tomorrow. So let's go ahead and filter this by release date. As we're selecting to filter this by release date, we can see we have a variety of other options here. If I wanted to only look at these recommendations that have suggestions or exceptions, if I wanted to look at them by a particular buyer or by a particular type, I have the ability to filter on those fields as well. Okay, this is a lot more meaningful to me. I'm looking at recommendations filtered by release date. In other words, I'm going to start from the top and I'm going to work my way down and I'm going to understand what MRP is telling me but I'm going to look at the things that affect me tomorrow or the next day as opposed to a week or a month out. Now in this first example, I know that this is an, an actual manufacturing order. It's MO0025. I also know that there's a couple icons associated. One is a chain link icon and one is an exclamation point. This tells me that there's a problem and I'm going to go ahead and drill into this information to understand what that problem is. I simply highlight the line item for the manufacturing order in question and I click the little arrow icon. The MRP order detail window gives me a bunch of information about either the actual manufacturing order or the planned manufacturing order. But there was an exclamation point there. Well, this is my visual indicator that there's an exception. So we're going to click on this exception button and kind of drill down into the detail behind why I was alerted to this particular manufacturing order with the exclamation point. Okay, so the MRP order detail window is telling me that I have an exception, and the exception is that the release is past due. In other words, for me to satisfy the demand that created this manufacturing order for this particular item, I should have released it before now. I know I have a problem. I'm going to be late. But remember, there was also a chain link icon. And that, of course, means there's a link. There's a linkage to something. I'm going to click on the links button. We're going to take a look. By looking at the links button, we understand that there's a linkage between this manufacturing order and this particular doc document number. Now, I understand this document number, ORDST2239, actually represents a sales order line. So I not only know that I'm late because I haven't released this order in time, but I also know that this order is directly related to a sales order line. That's scary. It means I'm late and there's a potential customer involved. Returning to the MRP quantities query window, I want to now navigate 
into a plan manufacturing order. In other words, MRP gives us two types of output. It gives us exceptions, which we just saw. It also gives us recommendations to build or procure items. In this case, it's a planned manufacturing order. And I want to go ahead and investigate this because I have an exception associated with this as well. Following the same navigation, we simply highlight the line item for the plan manufacturing order and we click on the arrow. Just as we did before, we're going to click on the exception button. And now we see the exception. Now this exception is different. This exception is telling us that we need to release within the next seven days. We're not late right now, but if we don't release this order within the next seven days, we will be late. I love this type of exception. It's proactive. It's telling me as a user what I need to do to make sure I maintain a feasible plan. So we looked at exceptions regarding manufacturing orders and plan manufacturing orders. Well, what about procurement? Let's go ahead and change the MRP quantity type, and we're going to look at exception messages associated with procurement or purchasing. Now, obviously, from the drop-down list, you can see that we have a variety of ways that we can dice and slice this information, and this is great. It allows the user to navigate very quickly to what they need to see to make decisions about scheduling and planning production as well as scheduling and planning procurement. But in this case, we want to go to plan POs. We're concerned with the procurement side of the MRP planning process. Just as we did before, we're viewing the output from MRP, but this output is specific to purchasing or procurement. And what we see here is a long list of planned purchase orders. In fact, the first record is for a particular item number, an ARM. We have a planned purchase order, but yet we also have an exception with it. So we need to drill into this to understand this exception. Navigating through procurement recommendations is exactly the same as navigating through manufacturing rep recommendations, so we simply have to click on the arrow, click on the exception button, and now we see, as we did before, that we have a plan purchase order that we need to release within the next seven days. MRP knows how long it takes to retrieve this item from our vendor. It knows when we need it. It knows what we have on hand. Therefore, it can tell me that I have to, within the next seven days, release this planned purchase order for the arm in order to satisfy potential demand. So MRP ran and it gave us planned manufacturing orders and planned purchase orders, but how do we convert those into actual manufacturing orders or actual purchase orders? Well, in the case of purchasing, as it is a manufacturing, we can do it on a one-off basis from this particular window by simply double-clicking the record. So we're going to double-click this line. If you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner of this MRP planned orders window, I can transfer this planned purchase order to an actual purchase order by clicking the transfer to PO button. Now I'd have to select a vendor here, or if I had a default vendor, it would pre-populate. The same functionality goes on the manufacturing side. On a one-off basis, I can take a planned production order or a planned purchase order and transfer those to the execution side of the software. While MRP, or Materials Requirements Planning, gives us planning recommendations as well as exceptions for the material side of our planning, Capacity Planning does just that. It takes the anticipated demand or workload on our particular work centers that are defined in our routings and provides us information based on what our utilization is and more importantly where our bottlenecks are for a particular workload. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
In this particular screen, the CRP by day screen, we're looking at capacity load across our work centers for a particular day. Now I could look at this uh, by other time periods as well, but what you're gonna see is for each work center what our scheduled load is, what our available load is, and what our percentage load is. Now I want you to keep one thing in mind. We do support subcontracting. So if I define a subcontractor as an outsourced work center, I would be able to view their capacity load the same as I can view my internal capacity load. Now, just like we saw in the quantities query screen within MRP, it was very icon oriented. I see an icon here. In fact, I see this red flag. Well, that can't be good. So what I'm gonna do is click on it because I know that red flag means that this work center for this particular time period is overloaded. When I click on that red flag for my bottleneck work center for that particular time period, I'm able to drill into those manufacturing orders that are resulting in the load on that work center. This is where I can interact with the system. If I wanted to, I could click on the hyperlinks to these manufacturing orders. I could reschedule them to solve the bottleneck condition. The idea is CRP, or Capacity Requirements Planning, gave us the display. It showed us with that visual indicator where our problem was, where our bottleneck was, and then we're able to drill into what creates the problem so that we can go ahead and resolve it. Now earlier we had talked about on a one-off basis transferring planned manufacturing orders or plan purchase orders to the execution side of the software. In other words, transferring a plan manufacturing order and creating a real manufacturing order, or transferring a plan purchase order and creating a real purchase order. But that's unrealistic in some environments. Some environments require us to do it at a volume level. In other words, I might want to transfer all my manufacturing orders for next week from a plan status to an actual status today. So let's go ahead and look at how we might do that. This window, the Edit Manufacturing Order Status window, allows me to look at a range of manufacturing orders as well as planned manufacturing orders, which is what we're looking at here, over a certain time range, perhaps it's release date, perhaps it's over a planner ID, and then I can select which ones I want to transfer from planned orders to actual orders. In this case, from MRP planned production orders to actual production orders. I simply selected a range, selected the mark all box, and I'm gonna hit the process button. And when I process this, what I'm doing is creating four separate manufacturing orders from these four separate planned manufacturing orders. In other words, I don't have to do this on a one-off basis. And this holds true for the procurement side of the system as well. At the heart of planning within the plan to produce business process in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 is material and capacity requirements planning. We've seen how MRP is really a calculation. It's a calculation that wants to minimize inventory carrying cost, maximize operating efficiencies, and make sure we maintain that customer service level where we're getting our orders out to our customers when they anticipate them. MRP provides us with output that allows us to interact with the system to maintain the feasibility of our plan. We saw how we could navigate within plan manufacturing and plan purchase orders, as well as actual manufacturing and actual purchase orders, to understand the exceptions, the things that might not be going well with our plan, as well as to understand what the demand was that resulted in that particular planning recommendation, such as the sales order line that caused the need for the manufacturing order. This is valuable information for the user in terms of making decisions about the feasibility of the plan. Now we also saw how capacity requirements planning gives us a visible view of our bottleneck resources and lets us drill into those resources to understand how we can correct the bottleneck issue. Finally, we looked how we can transfer planned orders, 
whether it's manufacturing or procurement on a one-off basis or on a volume basis in order to satisfy what our particular organizational needs are. Now, if you're interested in watching this demo again, just click anywhere in the Material and Capacity Requirements Planning box.